that's it. Yeah. That's ten. Grab the spares. Well, I suppose we should, huh? Mm -hmm. Put them on the other side or something. One more shot over there, man. All right, guys, just grabbing our crab line here. Yeah, as you might guess, it's that time of the year again. Yeah. Tanner's starts January 15th. So, yep. starting to load up some gear. Yeah, we brought a, brought a load down yesterday and stashed it away in the fish hold. So, we'll get this down there today. Just kind of grabbing a load of stuff every time we come home or when we head down to the boat in the morning. That way we can, uh, we'll just have it out of the way. Kind of make use of our time, I guess. So, yeah, looks like a pretty nice day. Windy out again, but... Not as bad as it's been. A little bit warmer this morning. Yeah, it's warmer for sure. It's nice. One sweatshirt weather. But I should probably have two on. Anyways, we're headed to the warm boat, so. <laughs> yeah, well, I guess we'll get on our way here. Maybe right. Ah. Hammer hand. Gonna recover? Got it. And oh, that's no. a close one. Frozen in there. So where do these go, folks? What are the purposes? <clears throat> it's a drop pipe that goes into the sump right here. Pump out our front hold. This one goes to the rear fish hold. Both of them just go into this cavity right here and come out on the other side of the engine room where they're plumbed into a pump. So uh, you gotta get this off of here and take this fitting off. And we are going to put it on our circulation pipe, which is over yonder. These are just some PVC pipes. They got some holes drilled in them every so often. Oh, 
what? These work great. <laughs> Pretty simple setup, anyway. Yeah. So, quick transition to the pivot. You yeah. change your, uh, your sump pump into a circulation pipe. Just have some big uh, uh, 316 stainless uh, coupling right here. We welded a pipe fitting onto it when we first set this up. And uh, yeah, this one is this one for in here. I guess. Uh, yeah, this. I'm not gonna bother putting tape on here just because uh, it doesn't really need it. Yeah, it's don't need to water out, not sucking water in, so I don't have to worry about pulling air through. Yeah, don't need to tighten it up much, anyways. So. I do make sure that we don't cross we just this. The hose into it, yeah? A little better. Snug it up a little bit. I'm not looking for real tight things, so that'll be fine. And so we need to put these in here because. Prior to the opener, we're going to put all our crab line down here for when we travel to the grounds. Keep it out of the way. Um, keep it from getting snowed on and rained on and frozen up and all that fun stuff. Yeah. That yeah, makes your life miserable later. <laughs> Yeah, these are just couplings like you'd use for a water line um, to polish surfaces that are machined, just made against each other, create the seal, the nut pulls them together and holds them tight. It's worked great so far, it's uh, foolproof really. Yeah, it's nice and easy. So right now our gen set's running and we just have our, our uh, little electric water pump on or crab pump that supplies our deck hose. We'll go ahead and test this out real quick. I didn't get one last year, I don't know. We didn't even put crab up here, that's crazy. 
So we have the same setup for the other forward hold and also the center one. Um, that's plenty of water to supply all three of those and have them full of crab, no problem. So this will just get full and then it'll just overflow. Well, we'll get this one swapped out and pop it in and start stowing our line away. We got another load at home, but this is uh, this is half the line we need. Well, more or less. No spares, but this is for 10 pots. Yeah. Got some extra stuff we'll bring along for spares. Um, kind of taking advantage of this nice afternoon. Our weather has been crazy and all over the place this last month. Um, Day after Christmas, maybe a lot of people saw we made national headlines of 67 degrees here in Kodiak. It's like that for what, about three days, I guess? Yeah. Um, mid 60s, low 60s. Yep. They call it the Pineapple Express. It's when the jet stream pulls warm air up out of the Pacific, kind of like from Hawaii, and brings it over to us. And um, honestly, it was kind of a nice treat, but it was also a little bit unsettling. Yeah. It's very warm out, very hot air, warm air. Yeah. Even prior to that, it was like 10 degrees, 15 degrees. So it was weird. It was bone chilling into almost like sweating territory. It was just like hot. Yeah. Hot and muggy. And then we went right back to the single digits or 15 degree weather uh, a couple of days later. Now it's warmed up a little bit again. We had a couple of good snow squalls today. We got some fierce wind storms. We just got over about three days of really heavy west northwesterly winds, like 40 knots. It's just been funky. Yeah, funky. But lucky for us, most of our work's taking place over there inside the circus tent, so <laughs> we've been happy and warm. Oh, we thought we'd start getting a little bit of work done on this. Every time we come down, we'll just grab a, a load of gear. Um, do you need to get over to the plant and get this long line reel lifted off, get it out of our way? Got a bait chopper to bring down, get that plumbed in. Uh, a few things like that. Yeah, we don't have a whole lot of work to do to get ready for crab fishing, so that's good. All of our gear is in pretty good shape because we've been using it. We didn't fish last year, there wasn't an opener, but the year prior to last we did. Fished it for a couple years, so all our gear is really in good shape and ready to go. Got everything pretty well dialed in, so like the rest of our fisheries, it's a pretty quick turnover. I think we could actually load all the crab gear and have everything down here in 
probably a matter of four or five hours. Yeah, it doesn't take long at all. Yeah, two loads of pots in the truck, one load of line really. And, uh, and the plumbing, all of it's just this easy right here to switch it over, so. Nice and easy. Yeah, the only other thing would be our bait chopper, but that's easy too. We've been mounting it up there, uh, behind where the reel is there, but I think this year we'll put it over here and run our um, hydraulic lines over to it from our stern hydraulic bank there. So that way we can keep our raft in its usual spot. The on deck in the way. Turn this pump off. Takes a careful touch. Yeah. I don't want to strip plastic. I think in this case we actually plan for those couplings get stripped and we're just threading it on that piece, which is nice. Oh, this one? right there matches up to that machine face and that draws it up tight so really easy to position and get started Good thing mom's not down here. She doesn't like it when the boat's listy. Climbing the mountain. Huh? Like climbing the mountain. Yeah. It's a good thing mom's not down here. light on fuel. She sure rides good when she's tanked down though, I'll say that. Well, we'll start getting this line tossed down. 
Probably just huck it all over on the other side. Yeah. Doesn't need sorted or nothing out. Huh? It's all the same. No, it's all the same. Yeah. Nice. Well, it's still prepped for the before last. Yeah, it's nice not having a deck full of junk. I'll say that. Deck full of frozen line. So you notice there's white line on here and then just some blue stuff. All this white line is actually sinking line. If you throw it in the water, it sinks down. This is where our buoy is attached. It keeps a bunch of line from being at the surface where other boats could run over it and get it fouled in their propeller. Or chop it up and you lose your gear. Trigger you? A little bit. <laughs> All right. Ten shots of line. Out of the way, out of the weather. So we'll do the same thing with our bait jars, bait bags. Those will all go down in a tub, down in the fish hold out of the way. Uh, we'll use our back ones. We'll put ice in there and bait as normal. And, uh, and then once we start fishing, we'll put crab into the front or the center one first and then we'll have the side ones if we need it. So that's our plan there. Looks like we're just about pumped out. So this water won't hurt nothing. That little bit in there, we'll just leave it. It's just sucking through the tubes right now, so it's only going to get so much of that water out of there. It's going to be a little bit left over. But like I say, it's no big deal. So, yeah, well, that pretty much does it for right now. We'll have to bring another load of line from the house. Got a, got a, I was gonna say you got some twine right there. No. Hanging up on things. <laughs> yeah, so uh so get another load of line from the house and get that stowed and uh we don't really have a whole lot to do. Still a few things, just like this and that, remove these bin boards, take the table off. Yep. We Not get our, really a whole lot involved, so. We'll grab our jig machines, take them off. These ones haven't been hooked up yet. One thing about the crab gear, it's easy to 
to manage this uh, this line won't be in our way pretty much all of our stuff can come down here except our pots and those only take a couple hours to to go out to the house grab 10 pots on a load bring them down here um, load it up in a couple three hours so that's a, a nice easy task there um, if we got to break down these pin boards that only takes a few minutes so yeah other than that not a whole lot to do get bait get ice get fuel basics yep check on a few mechanical things got our gen set running uh, a little bit the last couple of days had to replace the impeller on it but it looks like it's running good so just been letting it run while we're down, down here working keep the heater on inside get some heat in the boat and uh, I'll just give it a little exercise I guess but yeah it seems to be fine so hopefully we don't have any issues always got to remember to drain our hoses and our deck pump in the winter time stuff will freeze up solid it's really a hassle to to unthaw you gotta toss it in the water and let it hang there for a while until it thaws out enough to get water through it again same with the deck pump good way to ruin those is to leave them full of water in the winter time and that water will expand and break that pump like 400 bucks or something for a new one. Yeah. Oh, what you got in there? Uh, just look at how much. Ice. Pump them. It's ice from our last halibut trip. Still there. Been Didn't cold. go anywhere. Shoot some water in there if you want. Take about a month to thaw, probably. Yeah, about that. Our luck will probably get cold again, pretty solid. <laughs> Look at the frost on the hatch still. Yeah, I'll just uh, throw uh, It's been a tough out. winter for us. It's already been long. Ready for spring. Yeah. <laughs> that usually yeah, happens about like the like first week in the winter for us anyways. Yeah, the first, uh, first teens to get, it's like, okay, when's this over? Let's <laughs> get over. Let's put some water in there. There's, I don't think there's that much ice. It'll, it'll make it easier to chop up though. It's probably pretty hard, isn't it? I'm guessing. I knew it was like a brick. It's like an ice cube. Yeah. Here. Burn it out of there with some harbor water. Yeah. Alright, you've convinced me. <laughs> we'll just flood this tank now this one's our manual tank it still needs to be plumbed in Ice in there too. Same thing going on. Take the shovel over good ice. You never know when you're going to need it. In the winter time.
stiff hose. Bumper is in dire need of attention. Oh, yeah, crust, as they call it. <laughs> Fading. Anything else? Nope. Getting to the boat's more dangerous than being out fishing on the boat. Well, it looks like the harbor crew's been busy this morning. Got our floats cleared. They're up plowing the parking lot. Not a lot of snow, but just flurries lately. Yeah, get some coffee on. Yeah. Toss these over on the fishtail and go up and get another load. And we'll get them stowed away. Throwing away some lines. Keep them out of the weather. Keep the snow off them and yeah. Get them down low too. For what it's worth. Yeah, well that's way down low, but I don't know what these legs. 25 each or something? Yeah. 30. More when they're wet. Turn gray. It has. And 
not bonk my head. Yeah, kind of squally out, threatening to snow a little bit too. Harbor officer just came down and cleared our float, so that's nice. Making his rounds. Might be tough to keep up with today if we get some snow coming down. That's it for our line. Got some smaller items, bait jars, uh, bait bags, spare stuff, door rubbers, measuring sticks, bait hooks, things like that to come down. Be able to fit all those down in the hold too, keep them out of the way. So really the only thing we'll be traveling with is just our pots on deck, pots and buoys. Um, we'll probably put some buoys down too. They take up a bit of space, but they're not too big of a deal. Makes it easier to handle that stuff, so. We've got the crab pump running on this. A little big ice brick. Yeah. Starting to melt it. Yep. Yeah, some of the questions that we got about our hatches and, well, on the Emerald Isle and why we didn't just make them flush with the deck. Well, this is the reason right here. If all these hatches were flush, that'd just allow the water to just run straight into the others. With this raised lip, it helps prevent that, but even with this lip right here, if we tank down our middle one, water will flow into these two side ones. Just a little bit over it at a time, but eventually they start to fill up, so. That's why we have a, a heavy gasket on these two back ones and we can bolt them down. Keeps the water from getting in there. It makes it 100% watertight. But yeah, so if you just had a flush deck, anything that hit the deck would just flow in there. And that includes, you know, dirty and everything that, you know, dirt and dust and grime from in town. in this other hold, start melting that big chunk of ice. Yeah. <clears throat> that was leftover ice that we had from the plant when we were halibut fishing. We were hoping we'd be able to get a couple of rock fish trips in, but it just never happened. Um, the, the areas that were still open were pretty far away and just, just didn't have time to do it. Weather hasn't been exactly nice either, so. That time of year. I think we had a comment a while back too about our hatches if we ever worry about these ones blowing off. And uh, the answer to that is no, we don't. Um, they're pretty heavy hatches and they fit well. I guess that's the important thing is they fit well. They're not actually that heavy. But uh, the forward ones uh, fit down nice and tight and these rear ones right here are hinged. So we don't worry about those. Those are real nice so they're not gonna come off. This front one's kind of heavy. It's also hinged which makes it pretty convenient for dropping fish down or putting some ice in there or whatever. You don't have to flip the whole hatch open and uh, the front ones you know they just they fit so tight against the deck there's no way, way for wind to get underneath there and, and pick them up so pretty good design with the bulwarks and everything on the side it's not like the wind is really sweeping the deck that hard we do have to watch out when we have like uh, rubber made totes on deck if we have a big wind event coming we'll put those in the fish hold 
the lids like to get sucked out of the totes and blow away, get lost. So you have to be kind of conscious of things like that. Yeah, usually we put them down the fish hole. It's yeah. It's to be too windy. Yep. Or if we have our cable on here and a tall stack, we can stick them underneath there and they wedge in pretty good. But if they're just sitting around on deck, we make sure we put them away. Tarps, you always gotta watch out for tarps and put them away. Wind loves to snatch those and blow them off. Sometimes you get lucky and find them in the harbor. Usually they're gone. And speaking of gone, we had a skiff up there that came with Emerald Isle. I don't know if somebody came down and liberated it from us or if the wind did, but it was gone one morning. I haven't seen it since. It's gone. It's gone. Yeah. It was off of Windy that night. Yeah. And the other day we were able to see the bottom of the uh, harbor under the boat and no sign of it submerged <laughs> or anything down there. Yeah, uh, that may be a sink because the plug wasn't in it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, a bunch of beer cans. Not from us either. Everybody that comes in and out of harbor always likes to throw their beer cans in the water right there. For Pretty some great. reason. I don't know what it is. Irresponsible people. Yeah. Well, hopefully that will thaw out here before the week is over. Yeah. Or at least before we go crabbing. Yeah, it should be fine. Yeah. Hopefully it'll float up and we can land out with the shovel. Well, I guess that kind of wraps it up for now, huh? Yeah, polar plunge time. Just kidding. <laughs> Do it, man. No. Give you a buck. Not enough. So yeah, um, still have some stuff to do, so I guess we'll probably just bring you back and get some more. Yeah. Until then, see you later.